In our last tutorial, we have learned how to move this part up in the air and to the right using script. And here is the script that we use. Notice here that we are repeating the section of the code two times. And in many cases in scripting, you can repeat the same section of the code more than two times, maybe even hundreds of times. So in those cases, it is better to define your own function to perform this task. And whenever you want to perform the same task over and over again, you're just going to call your own user defined function. To define your own function, we're going to go up here and we're going to enter the keyword local followed by the keyword function. And you're going to give it a name. For example, let's call it move part. I like to start my function name with a capital letter. So I'm going to say move as opposed to a variable. I start out with a small letter. Like here, part, I use a small letter, but for the function name, I like to use a capital letter. So let's say move part, two parentheses, hit enter, and it fills in the end for you. Now, instead of doing this here, I'm going to call my function right here. So I'm going to say move part. And instead of executing this portion of the code here, I'm going to cut this and I'll put it inside my function. So now when I call my function, it's going to do this section of the code for me. It is the same as having this code here, right over here. Before we run tests, just a reminder, remember to anchor your part. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Let's now run tests and take a look. And there it is. You see the part is moving up. It's going to stop and then it's going to move to the right. There it is. So our code with the user defined function worked exactly the same way it worked before. So what is the benefit in doing this? You may ask. Well, the benefit is we now can get rid of this section of the code here. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the function here, right? So I'm going to say move part. So we're calling the same function to perform the same exact code here in here instead, right? Let me comment this out. Do control slash to comment out your code. So this part here is not going to be executed anymore. The reason I don't want to delete it because there are differences between this code and this code. For example, here we're moving in the X direction and here we're moving in the Y direction. So if I just call the function as the way it is right now, it's not going to work because it's going to continue to move the part up in the Y direction. What I want to do is instead of hard coding this inside the function, I want that to be a parameter. So I'm going to cut this and how about we call this vector? So it's going to be a V. So we're passing in a V and we're going to use the V here for vector three. And here we're passing in the vector three here. So I'm going to paste this in. If you like, you can declare this, load this into a variable and pass in the variable here. That is up to you. I'm just going to pass in the vector three here. And in this case down here, I have to pass in this vector three. So I'm going to copy this and put it in here. This way, when I call the function the first time, it's going to move the part up in the Y direction. But when I call the function the second time, it's going to move the part in the X direction. Let's see if it works. There it is. It's moving the part in the Y direction. And now it should move the part in the X direction. It worked. Previously, you've seen how we declare a function with no parameter. In this case here, we have a function with one parameter. But there is one other thing. You see this one is moving the part up by 700 units. Well, 700 times it's moving. It's executing this loop 700 times. But in this case here, we only want to execute that loop 200 times. That means we need another parameter. 
So our first parameter is the vector 3 that we're passing in. The second parameter has to be this number. So here I'm going to change it to 700. In the second time that we're calling the function, we're calling it with a 200 times parameter. So this one is going to be 200. We have changed the call to the function. Now we have to go and add that parameter to the function. So we're going to say comma. We can call this m. And we're going to do this m number of times. So it's going to go from 1 to m, where m is the number that we're passing in. It is the second parameter of our function. Let's now run and take a look. You can see the part is moving up. So it should go up for 700 times, and then it should move to the side only 200 times. So it should stop very soon. And there it is. Now we can get rid of this code here because we no longer need it. You can see our code now is a little cleaner because we only do this part of the code one time. Other than that, we're using the function to execute that code. Now, if in your game you're doing this 100 times, this code here would be much cleaner than before. The next part here is unrelated to our example here, but I just want to add one more thing is your function can return a value. For example, so here I'm going to say return m plus 5. And here we're going to print out that value. Print. Or you know what? Let me put this into a variable. So here I'm going to declare a variable. Local. Return value and here we're going to say return value equals to this function. So this function is going to return a value and you can use that value for whatever you need. In this case, I'm just going to add 5 to the parameter that I'm passing in. So it's going to print 705 here. Here we're just going to say return value. And same down here, we're going to print out return value. Or how about down here, we're, we're going to do it a little differently. So I'm going to show you another way to do it. Is you do not need to put it into a variable because you can print it out directly here. So I'm just going to cut this function. So we're, we're going to call the function inside the print statement. And when the value is returned back to the print statement, it's going to print out that value. But still, it's going to execute this function before the value is returned back to the print statement, and it's going to print it out. So this is two different ways of doing it. It's your pick, whichever way you want. Let's now open up our output window, and we're going to run and take a look. All right, so it's moving up. Nothing is printed. Not nothing is printed yet until it finishes and it returns the value. And there it is, 705. And now it's going to go to the right. When it's done, it's going to return another value, 205. That's how you use the user defined function in scripting in Roblox. In this case, we had an example with the function with no parameter with one parameter and with two parameters if you need more parameters you can just add more parameters and also we learn how to return a value from the function